Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video we are going to be providing some background information on how to determine wind loads acting on a structure. And so our main reference is going to be the ASC 716 standard, chapters 26 through 31. So let's go ahead and get started. There are three main methods used to determine wind loads acting on a structure, okay? One method is called the directional method. And from ASC 716, that's gonna be mostly found in chapter 27. Another method is called the envelope method. Envelope method or envelope procedure. And that's going to be mostly found in chapter 28 of ASC 716. And then we also have the wind tunnel method or wind tunnel procedure. And that's going to be summarized in chapter 31 of ASC 716. So um, these are these three common methods. Now, in this particular video, we're going to um, mostly talk about the envelope procedure and uh and you know more specifically something called the simplified envelope procedure so again that's going to be the focus of this video the envelope method um slash procedure from chapter 28 is a um you know a fairly straightforward method and it's a it's a great method to go over when you're first learning about wind loads and how to calculate them on certain types of structure so let's go ahead and uh talk about that, the envelope method. So with the envelope method, um, this me method is mostly applicable to low rise buildings. Okay, so we're gonna make a note here, used for low rise buildings, okay, um, with flat or gable roofs, uh, flat or gable roofs or hip roofs. You could use it for hip roofs as well. Okay. Um, now again, it's mostly defined in chapter 28. So um, if you have a copy of ASC 716 uh, handy, I would flip to chapter 28. Um, and you know, it's basically in the title, the envelope procedure. So, uh, as we get into this envelope procedure, I want to define a couple of, uh, terms that we're going to see in the envelope procedure. First, if you have an enclosed structure with a, with a gable roof that may look something like this, let's make that look a little better. Oh, goodness gracious. I'm having trouble. There we go, that's a better gable roof. <laughs> With a gable roof, it looks something like that. Okay, well first, this is called a gable roof. I'll make a note of that, gable roof. A gable roof is characterized by two slopes, a uh, slope on either side of a common high point um, in the roof. So this is like a profile view of a, of a gable um, framed system. So when the wind is blowing, if the wind is blowing in this direction, Right here, um, we can go ahead and put the wind velocity in this direction. This side would be called the windward side of the structure. So we'll put a note here, windward side, okay? Now on the opposite side, we're gonna have what's called the leeward side. So whenever wind is blowing on the windward side, it's gonna create some type of pressure distribution here, okay? Some kind of pressure distribution. And then what can end up happening on the leeward side is you end up getting a suction effect, okay? I'll put a note here, suction on the leeward side, okay? Now, um, on the roof, you can also end up developing uh, pressures on the roof in either uh, compressive nature or a suction nature as well, okay? 
Um, so again, this is windward side and leeward side. Now we also have some important dimension lines uh, on, on this sketch as well. So these little overhangs are called eaves. So if you uh, draw a dimension line here down to the ground surface, this is called the eave height. Okay, uh, man, I spelled eave wrong. There we go. E-A, the -E, eave height. So again, um, this little overhang is called an eave. Okay, now we also have um, what would be called the uh, mean roof height, okay? So that's another important dimension line that um, you need to be aware of. The mean roof height is pretty much what it sounds like. It's the height of your structure from its ground surface uh, up to basically the average roof height. So it's the height that's in between the eave height and the crest height. So that's the uh, mean roof height. And we typically call that H. And again, we say mean roof height. Okay. So these are just some common definitions uh, when you're when you're looking at this. Now, um, if you take a look at uh, the standard, you can we can make a note here, we can say C figure 28 point five dash one of ASCE 716. So maybe pause the video, take a second and uh, open up your ASC seven and you can see a three dimensional drawing of a gable roof system with wind pressures um, with two different cases, a case A and a case B of the direction of the wind blowing on, uh, on that kind of gable structure there. Okay. So um, let's take a look at uh, the simplified envelope procedure. So in ASC seven part chapter eight, chapter 28, part two of ASC 716 gives the simplified envelope procedure. Okay, and specifically, we're going to say C table 28.4-1, which um, actually summarizes the procedure itself, but the, all of part two gives all your information about the simplified envelope procedure. Um, in summary, though, <clears throat> the simplified envelope procedure, which is what we're going to be discussing mostly in this video and um, doing an example in a follow-up video is based on a few assumptions. Um, first, it's based on a uh, mean roof height H uh, of 30 feet in what's called exposure category B. Now, if you don't have a mean roof height of 30 feet or you're in a different exposure category, that's okay. There's some adjustments you can um, apply to your calculations here um, that'll, uh, you know, allow you to still look at different roof, different mean roof heights and different exposure categories. Um, another note on the simplified envelope procedure is uh, roof slope angles, which they, the standard AC7 standard calls them theta, um, less than or equal to uh, 10 degrees um, can be allowed to use the eave height as the mean roof height. So when we see some calculations later um, for our calculation purposes and um, when we're obtaining some values out of uh, some of these design tables in, in chapter 28, if you have um, a roof slope angle theta less than or equal to 10 degrees, um, you can 
put a little colon here, you can use the eave height uh, as the mean roof height. So that means um, you can use a, a, a lower height. You know, the eave height is typically gonna be um, quite a bit shorter than the mean roof height, okay? And so um, according to this procedure, again, this, this simplified envelope procedure, the design, the design wind pressure, which we call P sub S is computed as P sub S equals lambda KZT times PS 30, okay? Now, this lambda value is an adjustment factor. So we'll make a note of this adjustment factor for roof height and exposure category. So what this means is um, if you have, you know, I said this a second ago, a few minutes ago, I guess, if you have a, mo a, reef, a roof mean height uh, that's different than 30 feet or an exposure category that's not exposure category B, as the procedure assumes it to be, then you can um, apply this uh, adjustment factor lambda, um, and you get this from figure 28.5-1, and that can account for other mean roof heights and other exposure categories. So again, maybe pause the video and find this um, in your ASC 716, and in my copy of it, it's page 316, okay? Um, KZT, KZT is called a topographic factor. And uh, this equals 1.0 for flat ground. Okay. Um, and uh, you know, as far as as far as an introductory um, to wind load goes, um, you know, I'm just gonna stick with uh, KZT of, of 1.0, but AC7 um, does have an equation and a little procedure on how to calculate KZT values when uh, you don't have flat ground. So um, you can kind of flip through that on your own time. But as far as uh, we go for, for my particular videos, we're going to stick with KZT is, is a one. Um, for a good reference for looking at KZT, Calculation values, we'll say, uh, take a look at figure 26.8-1 um, as a reference if you want to know more information about that. Um, and then the PS30, PS30 values are called the wind pressure values. Wind pressure values for exposure category B um, and a 30 foot mean roof height. And uh, this is gonna come from a table of values. Again, um, this will come from chapter 28. Um, I believe it's table 28.5. Um, actually trying to flip there right now and find the exact page for you. Yep, uh, figure 28.5-1. So again, figure 28.5-1. It, it's labeled as a figure, but it's actually a table. Um, this part of it is a table with a lot of values in it. That starts on page 317 in my C 716. So take a look at that. Um, so, uh, Part of what you need in terms of executing this, uh, this calculation and then obtaining these PS30 values here, if you take a look at that, that table um, in, in figure 28.5-1, the first thing you need is the basic wind speed, okay? So we're gonna make a note here. We're gonna say obtain, obtain basic wind speed. from figures 26.5 um, 
in ASC 716. Okay, so um, again, maybe pause the video and flip back to chapter 26 and you'll see uh, figures 26.5 and there's several of them um, based on the exposure category that your building is in. So we'll make a note here. We're gonna say this is based on uh, exposure, I'm, I'm sorry, risk category. Um, not exposure category, but based on risk category. Okay, so um, so that's it pretty much, uh, you know, in summary. Again, um, if you take a look at uh, chapter 27, I'm sorry, chapter 28, um, part two of, of ASC 7, there's a nice little table summary, table 28.4-1, I wrote it earlier in this video, that gives you like a six step procedure for this uh, simplified method. So um, again, you know, in order to best follow along with this uh, video and this content, it's best if you have access to an ASC 716 um, standard so you can kind of follow along uh, best. So thanks for watching this video and uh, hopefully this, this quick summary was helpful.